All right. Uh, hi. Just trying to check if you can if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks. Um, so I'm going to kindly ask that you uh, you please. Uh, uh, please uh, mute your microphones. Uh, for this session, though, you are free to to uh, interrupt me uh, during class. So that's not a problem. But in, in subsequent classes, we'll have a more formal. Excuse me, Kapemba. I don't know if it's Kapemba Chongo. Could you please mute your microphone? Thank you. Um, I'll ask that. Um, uh, in subsequent classes, I'll ask that you um, you um, will we'll use the Google Meet feature where you raise up your hand or something. Or I'll be inviting people to ask questions or something. But but for today, I mean, this is meant to be um, it's meant to be one of those uh, info sessions. So if you have uh, a question, um, please feel free and uh, ask away. All right. So we start, I suppose. Um, And if if I can just get to the notes, all right. Um, excellent. So uh, just when I just shared my screen, and I'm going to ask if uh, if if someone can confirm whether, whether or not you can see my screen. Hello? Can you see my screen? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, can you see my screen? Yes. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. That wasn't so hard, now was it? All right, so great. Welcome to uh, 3020, ICT 3020. Um, um, Fundamentals of is it software engineering and project management is called. So one of the reasons why I only have fundamentals of software engineering here is because um, <laughs> there wasn't enough space to include the entire course title, course description. Uh, so this lecture session is just going to be uh, basic administrivia to introduce you to the course, uh, essentially give you a sense of what to expect in the course. Um, and hopefully, I think we will have time, we'll, we'll have a brief introduction to the course. Uh, so my name is Light Piri. I guess you already know me. Um, just to try and contextualize things here, a couple of important important things um, to note here is that uh, we are in year number three, so we are remaining with one more year before we we leave the UNSA or before we are done with the uh, Bachelor of ICTs with Education program. Um, another important thing here is that uh, there's a prerequisite course associated with with uh, 3020. And that's uh, 2010. Um, the implications here are obvious, right? There are certain assumptions that are going to be made as we are um, going to cover the various topics in this course. We will assume that you know how to program. We will assume that you were introduced to, to certain fundamental programming concepts, right? So there'll be nothing like revisiting things that were done in 2010. Um, something else to note here is that uh, there are two companion Causes that are associated with 3020. Um, most important one being 3010, which is uh, database and web technologies. Uh, this is important because some of the things that we get to cover are ideally supposed to be um, performed in conjunction with, with the things that are going to be introduced to you in 3010. The, the reason why uh, 3030 is cited as a companion course is because uh, um, Ideally, it's, it's supposed to, in part, um, introduce you to, I guess, uh, a particular type of software or software used in a specific type of domain, and that's a uh, um, education sector, right? So I just want you people to keep, the, keep this at the back of your mind. Some of the things you're going to be discussing might be useful in helping you understand uh, what you're going to cover in 3030. And who knows, maybe, uh, some of the things that are covered in 3030 might potentially be useful as well looking at uh, 3020. 
although discussion of 3020 is, is a broad introduction to software development, right? So it's not really like we're going to focus on a particular uh, particular domain, right? Like education, the education sector, for instance, um, where you have educational technologies. In terms of course, course activities, we have uh, three core course activities. Um, we, we will be having three, um, three lecture sessions every week. So that's nominally three hours worth of um, traditional lectures every week. Um, they're supposed to be two hours worth of lab sessions. Um, I'm not really sure uh, how much progress has been made in so far as tutorial sessions are concerned. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, they're supposed to be a tutor in this course. Um, we need to follow up with, with, with the HOD if, if, if a tutor is not assigned very, very soon. But they're supposed to be a tutor assigned to the course, or ICT courses, by the way. Um, in terms of assessments, um, I get to talk about assessments very, very soon, but uh, broadly speaking, there are uh, three categories of assessments. Um, there's going to be a group-based project. Um, there'll be class theory tests that will be written, and then there'll be a final exam a 50-50 split between the continuous assessment score and the final exam score. Um, I don't know if there are any questions so far. A reminder that you are free to, to interrupt me if you have any questions. Um, if not, then I guess we'll proceed. Um, the, the students always obsess about... I have a question. Yeah, please, go ahead. Let's go ahead. Doctor, I have a question. Um, you say on the course activities, we're supposed to have tutorial slash lab, lab, laboratory sessions. Now, how are we going to do that online? Well, same exact way we are, we are having mm -hmm. lecture session. So, so 3020 is not, uh, it's not a practical course per se. I mean, it is a practical course, but you don't need to go into a lab and uh, I guess I don't know if, if you remember what you did with... Uh, with your tutor in first year where you open up uh, a computer and then you're introduced to different components um, uh, associated with, with, with or the high level functional units of a, a, a typical computer system. No, no, no. Uh, the, the practical sessions in here will be mostly tailored towards helping you understand the concepts associated with software engineering, right? So for instance, once we cover um, requirements elicitation or requirements specification, um, there are certain concepts that students would tend to find relatively hard to understand. Uh, so it would be the role of the tutor to try and uh, reinforce all those things. Also, um, as you start working towards the group-based project, uh, when you get stuck, the idea of the tutorial sessions is to have the tutor um, help you with whatever problems you're going to experience. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. All right. Thank you for the question. Very important question. Um, in in terms of uh, prescribed and recommended textbooks, now the 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 actual program document will probably have uh, uh, a whole bunch of uh, prescribed textbooks there. Uh, by the way, there's meant to be a companion uh, course syllabus document, which is already on the Moodle. Um, but but some of the some of the some of the prescribed texts that are going to be that we are going to extensively use um, as follows, right? So the classic software engineering by Ian Somerville, um, you notice you notice it will it will pop up quite often actually towards the end. Uh, so each lecture slide will have a bibliographic each slide deck will have a bibliographic slide which will list um, external resources that were used to compile this, the, the slide deck. Uh, and what you will notice is that this, this classic by Ian Somerville will pop up a lot. Um, that's because um, uh, most of what, what we cover in the course is more aligned with the book itself, right? I'm not sure what the current version of the, of the text is, uh, but uh, last time I checked, I think the most recent text the most recent edition was uh, the tenth edition. Um, I don't think it matters a lot if you if you if you look at uh, a more recent edition, um, seeing as we're not really 
uh, doing any sort of programming of sorts, right? Um, the mythical man month is probably going to pop up a lot once we cover lecture series three or module number three, when we start looking at project management, uh, most especially when we discuss things like uh, uh, teamwork and um, group cohesion, right? Um, so take note. It's, it's a relatively old book, but it's, uh, it's, it's considered a classic in software engineering anyway. Um, and then towards the end, uh, once we are done with um, um, verification and validation or validation and verification, we, we get to cover a module that's loosely aligned with trying to gain a firm sense of how you experimentally test uh, software once developed, right? So the systematic process that you go through when you are, you are conducting uh, user acceptance testing Right, especially when it comes to user experience and usability testing, for instance. So we want to get an appreciation of, of how you design those sorts of experiments. Um, and all this is important because of uh, what is coming your way in 4014 next year. Um, and I get to talk about that uh, very, very soon, but I guess you might as well just say it now. Um, so part of the reason why why we're doing this course is because it's meant to prepare you for the capstone project or the final year project that you, you um, get to conduct in fourth year, right? So that's ICT 4014. Uh, so this is a classic book really, uh, Experimentation in Software Engineering. And now with the exception of, uh, of uh, Ian's, Ian Somerville's Software Engineering, these, these other, prescribed text or recommended text are, are going to be used as, as more or less like references, really. We, we only get to pick out a few selected chapters from these books. Um, unlike unlike uh, Ian, some of you were, will more or less be studying the entire book, right? Uh, the course is actually, in my opinion, I mean, I was not involved with the design of the course itself, but it's almost as though, as, as with most software engineering courses, it's almost as though it's based on the textbook itself. Um, um, in, in terms of uh, course resources and specifically software tools here, um, now there's, there's a broad spectrum of tools that, that you can potentially use for some of the things you're going to be doing here. Um, you were taught uh, how to install software, how to configure software in EDU 1020, and I believe uh, there was a dedicated discussion of computer software in ICT 1110, so you shouldn't have a put it out there that uh, being course instructor, I am going to be using certain specific software tools. So subsequent slide decks will have exemplars or artifacts that have been prepared using specific types of software tools. Um, and th this is by no means comprehensive, but we're going to make extens I am going to personally make extensive use of uh, LucyChart, um, Project Libre, uh, Libre um, Dyer um, and Git, right? So LucidChart is, um, is um, listen, there's eight people waiting here. You want to use your own assigned email addresses for this, so sad. Um, if, you, if you use, if, I don't know if you've noticed those of you that have been logged on. If you use your own assigned email address, you don't have to wait for somebody to let you into the room, right? I don't understand. So uh, ideally, we're going to make extensive use of Lucid Chart um, once we once we get to a stage where we start looking at the unified modeling language, right? So we, we start uh, once we start our discussion of um, of, of the different uh, UML or UML models or diagrams that we we tend to use when um, when we're developing software, when we're designing software. Uh, Daya is does pretty much what Lucy Chart uh, Lucy Chart would, would do for you, um, except it's one of those. Uh, I guess it's a it's it's an offline tool that you can use with Lucy Chart. It's a, it's a cloud based it's a cloud based uh, platform. Um, so what that means is you need a dedicated internet connection. But with a tool such as Daya, for instance, um, you can pretty much just install it on on your computer and be able to use it offline. Um, interestingly enough, most of these tools will allow you to export artifacts that you create or generate into a format that can later on be used or uh, that can be used to, um, that can be used in a completely different software application, right? So 
uh, with Dia, for instance, I do believe you can export in, uh, is it uh, SVG format or something? I don't know, I could be wrong here, but uh, I think you can export in SVG format, I think. You should be able to export in different other formats here. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, there's a broad spectrum of formats that you can export artifacts that you create um, in, in this, yeah, using this tool. Um, and then Project Libre will, will be used extensively um, once we start our discussion of uh, project management. Um, and it turns out that uh, it's, it's marketed as, um, it's marketed as a, an open source alternative to Microsoft Project, um, which makes life uh, quite, quite interesting really because what that means is you can create artifacts in- Dr. P, uh, yeah. excuse me, sir. You are a little bit too low that I can barely get you. Oh, really? Is that, is that the same for everybody else? Because uh, I'm screaming right now, which is why I'm asking. Is, are you unable to hear me? It's a question. It, I still can't get you, sir. It's still very low. Listen, there's a, there's a question here. Pascalina seems to suggest that uh, I'm low here. Does this apply to everybody else? Miss Bule, can you get me? On my end, not yeah, really. I can get, I can get you fine. Miss Bule, your microphone is muted. Yeah, so so uh, Pascalina, you want to check your, your headset? Um, the volume on your head. Uh, everybody else seems to, to be getting us clearly here. Thank you, Miss Marka there. Kapemba uh, oh. Chongo seems to suggest that you can barely hear you. You want to check your microphones here, right? So we'll probably, uh, here's the one way of checking this is this, this, this lecture session is being recorded, yeah? So when playing back this recording, we'll be able to tell whether or not um, whether or not my my sound, the sound quality for my end was low or not. But I think it's fine. People seem to suggest that uh, it's fine. You just want to adjust the volume in whatever device you're using. All right, good stuff. So, um, so I was just trying to say Project Libre is marketed as, as being an, an offline uh, or, or an open source alternative to um, so-called uh, Microsoft Project, right? In fact, if you look up uh, Project Libre online, um, it's one word. If you look up Project Libre online, you notice that the tagline is, is always uh, number one alternative to Microsoft Project uh, open source, right? Um, unfortunately, right? Unfortunately, they haven't yet got into a stage where they, they're offering um, a cloud-based solution as is the case with uh, tools such as Microsoft Office, for instance, but you can subscribe or sign up so that once better testing starts, and then perhaps you can, you can be selected as one of those people that can, can be co-opted to, to experiment with um, their cloud-based solution. Right? This, these are all relatively easy tools to use, or at least it shouldn't really uh, take, you, take you that long to understand to familiarize yourself with the interfaces of these different tools. Um, as with most things in life, I'm sure when it comes to tooling, you're, you're better off, the, the more you use this tool, um, the more proficient you're going to become, right? And, and the sooner you start doing this, the better, because we, we are going to be making extensive use of some of these tools. Uh, for instance, during our discussion of project management, pretty much most of the artifacts like the old background structures and, and the gun charts and um, what else? What else is there? So we break down structures and the gun charts are going to pretty much, uh, they're going to pretty much, uh, uh, the, the race metrics, we're going to make use of Project Libre, right? You know, you can notice here, you probably notice at some stage that you can, you can, uh, I guess I didn't open that thing here. That's okay. Um, you should be able to, Goodness, it's just, uh... okay, doesn't look like it's here. That's okay. All right. Um, 
Uh, so an another tool that we're going to uh, make use of is uh, a configuration management platform, uh, vision control platform called uh, Git. Uh, now, again, like, like with most, most types of um, things that you do with software, there's usually a number of alternatives. Uh, we've decided to, to adopt Git because, uh, in part because it's probably one of the most widely used um, vision control systems or software packages. Uh, you essentially use it to, for the most part, you use it to, to keep track of the different versions of uh, source code that you're implementing, right? So very, very easy uh, tools to use. Um, if, if, if Mr. Mbewe introduced you to uh, text editors or IDE such as uh, Visual Studio Code, for instance, you could pretty much integrate, uh, you can integrate, you can integrate uh, Git within Visual Studio Code. But even more interestingly, you can actually, you can actually, uh, you can actually, you can, you can use, you can use Git in isolation, right? Um, I don't know if this is working, but you can pretty much use Git in isolation. Uh, oh. Oh, wow. Okay. Looks like it's not here. That's okay though. You can use Git in isolation. So the idea behind uh, vision control is that uh, you, you want to keep track of the different versions of software, right? Um, so if, if I, assuming this, this was, I was writing software, I wasn't really writing software, but I was, well, I was using markup language to author a document here, but, 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 but I can keep track of the different versions, right? You notice that I was making changes on different, different uh, time, 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 time periods here. I started making changes on July 6th, 2020, uh, and the current, the current uh, version of the document is as of, uh, it's as of, uh, if only I can get to the beginning, I guess. It's as of February 10th, right, 2021. You know, so I can go back in time and try and see what exactly did I do on the 9th of August at 1410, for instance, and just roll back to this commit here. Right, so we will, um, we will learn exactly how to use this, uh, these tools. I'm not sure if Mr. Mbewe introduced you to vision control during uh, your discussion of 2010. Uh, it's, again, it's not part of the, it's, it's not supposed to be a core, core uh, aspect or core focus area of 2010, but it is vital, right? Uh, even more so in instances where you are collaborating with other people, which is what we're going to do, right? Remember, it was mentioned that uh, you're going to work on a group project. If you're working on a group project and once you get to a stage where you're implementing software, obvious question to ask is how you're going to reconcile the different versions of the software, right? This is where vision control comes in. Um, all right, uh, some other tools are probably going to be introduced to you um, as, as we proceed. And in fact, what we do as we're covering some of these modules or topics is we deliberately point to different types of alternatives, right? So for instance, once we start our discussion of vision, or distributed uh, vision control, for instance, or configuration management, we will point to the fact that besides Git, there are things like subversion, for instance, right? Or Mercurial. Um, all right, um, the, in terms of cost resources, everything is going to be shared via the Moodle. Um, the, 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 the course site is already up and running. Um, the course syllabus and today's slide deck, including the handout, the follow up uh, is already available on the Moodle. Uh, all you have to do is log in using your um, the credentials, obviously. Um, there you go, right? Uh, this is the familiar site. We don't have to, we don't have to waste time here explaining what the, these things are for here, but each, each module is going to be associated with, uh, with, uh, with slide decks and handouts. Um, but in addition to this, and I think I, I, don't, um, I, I don't mention it here, in addition, to, in addition to these slide decks, what we will do, I just realized that I didn't interact with you guys last, um, <clears throat> last year, but what, what we will do besides the slide deck is we will provide you with uh, uh, 
the recording, the recording and the chat transcript uh, will be made available to you. So I'll show you an example here of uh, 1110, for instance. Um, what you'll notice is that uh, uh, each, each lecture session has homage, I suppose, I don't know. It has a correspond. it has slide decks, right, and handouts, um, and then a recording uh, of the session, seeing as we're doing this online. Um, and then there's, there's also meant to be, besides the, reco the recorded screencast itself, uh, we'll also provide you with uh, a chat transcript, right? So this thing here. Uh, so the conversations that you, you have uh, in, the, in, the, in the chat um, will be shared with you as well. It turns out that there's usually important information that you find in here. Sometimes, like today, for instance, you'll have noticed that I pasted I pasted a, a link, right? I pasted a link in, in there. Um, so you'll be able to access these things via the chat transcript itself. Um, I'm, I'm guessing this is, a, I apologize that we're repeating things that were done with you, I guess, in second year when you, I, I, I don't know which courses you did online here. I'm sure the same exact things are being done uh, last year. But nonetheless, I thought I'd, I'd put it out there, right? Um, so in essence, everything is, is going to be on, on the um, Moodle site. So the lecture notes, uh, the handouts, any reference materials that we think are important um, will be uploaded and organized according to the different topics and modules that you're covering. Um, and also, more importantly, the assessments will be made available via the Moodle as well. So that will be the group-based assignments. Um, and... Uh, and tests. We are supposed to write two tests. The plan is to, because you people are coming back, uh, are going to be physically on campus in the second half of the year, in the second term or second semester, we will have the first test online. So it will be administered online uh, via the Moodle. Um, so additional cost resources like software packages, for instance, for the benefit of those that might, might, might feel the need for us to provide these resources, these are made available uh, via Google Drive for the most part, right? I know I mentioned here the instructor website, maybe here as well, but mostly via uh, Google Drive. But also, all of these recorded screencasts that we keep uh, citing here um, are essentially nothing more than links um, to YouTube, right? So the, the screencasts and whatever resources, video resources that we feel are important will be um, provided to you via YouTube playlist. Uh, what you'll notice is that, oh, there's no YouTube link here. I'll include a link here to the YouTube playlist for uh, 30, for 30, 30, 20. But as always, you will find this playlist, uh, uh, you should be able to find this playlist on, on my, on my channel. Um, in fact, when you go to this channel under uh, these sections here, you want to pay particular attention to the section that's tagged as teaching and learning, uh, pipe symbol live, uh, lecture recordings, screencasts, and companion playlists. And then from this, from this section here, this shelf, what you want to do is uh, you want to be on the lookout for 3020, right? 2020 slash 2021 ICT 3020 playlist. Yeah. You might be interested in, <clears throat> in looking up um, uh, things that were done last year. Uh, for instance, what you'll notice is you'll find curated, curated lists of, um, where am I? Cur curated lists of uh, projects that were done by, uh, by students from last year, because what you do as, uh, as part of this group project is you're working towards developing um, some software artifact as a group, right? So we, we do a few presentations and um, you're supposed to implement a piece of software, you're supposed to prepare um, design, uh, a design document, a software uh, requirement specification document as well. Um, so you might be interested in looking up uh, what these people did last year, I guess, I don't know. I'm, I'm sharing the link um, in case you're interested. All right, <clears throat> um, I don't have any questions so far. Okay, if not, um, so in terms of uh, course grading, 
Um, there's a 50-50 split, so 50% is, uh, as, uh, the CA is 50, accounts for 50% of the course grade, and the final exam accounts for the remaining 50%. The continuous assessment is fragmented into two. 20% uh, is uh, allocated for the group-based project, um, and then 30% is uh, allocated towards the class theory tests that are going to be written, that's two of them. Um, Ideally, what, what happens in the group based project here, um, and more details are following very, very soon once you are requested to form these groups, is you'll be required to form groups of three to five individuals. Um, and then you, you work towards, you work towards um, uh, predefined assessments. So preparing project proposal, for instance, um, presenting the project proposal as a group um, writing the software, preparing design documents, preparing the software requirement specification document, um, conducting the requirement felicitation process where you get to collect the requirements that fit into the design process of the artifact you're going to be um, implementing. Um, uh, and then the class theory test, as I mentioned, two of them, um, because it's two of them, each, each test is going to account for 15%, obviously. And then towards the end of the year, obviously, you get to write the final exam. Um, Again, just to give you an idea of how the assessments are going to be further fragmented here, even though we are saying that 20% uh, is going to be allocated towards the group-based project, essentially, or ideally, the group-based project is going to be fragmented into um, subcategories, right? Um, so you work through, through the proposal, your software requirement specification document, the design document, uh, the source code itself, a bit of a demonstration, I suppose, I don't know, and then you're supposed to prepare a final report and a few other deliverables that I guess we'll have to probably remove because of, uh, because of this uh, online learning or e-learning. It, it turns out that we may not have uh, sufficient time to do some of these things, but um, we'll, we'll change these things, we'll modify these things as we go along. Just to mention here, key takeaway point here is that uh, uh, these these uh, assessments, these categories will be fragmented. I mean, so the test is split into two tests. The project is going to be fragmented into subcategories, right? So work towards these uh, different assessment uh, components, subcategories of assessment components. And each, each of these subcategories are fragmented into uh, or as, ascribed um, marks, right? That will ultimately account for the 20%. Um, to try and provide an incentive to encourage people to participate actively in the projects, um, we, we may or may not uh, uh, have your colleagues tell us whether or not you are an active participant. You want to actively participate in this, right? Otherwise, uh, people won't want to work with you next year. Right? So this is an opportunity for you to, to show the people you're going to work with that you, you are... Yeah, we're the resource, right? You, you are a dependable resource, a dependable team member or something. It turns out that you will also self-organize next year. Uh, we were attempted this year in 2020 because of the performance last year to have to, to assign you to groups, but I, I think it's better that we stick with the usual process of having you self-organize into groups because you know each other better. All right, um, I mean, the the, the course grading in terms of the grade point, uh, the grade points associated with the different grades and the corresponding score ranges are still the same. Um, these, these, these are specific to the score of education, right? Um, so at your own time, just uh, visit or revisit slide number 19 if you've forgotten the ranges. Uh, key takeaway point here is that uh, for you to pass the course, you need to get at least 45% collectively. I'm going to spend a bit of time here to, to tell you something about academic dishonest, right? The fact that this thing is taken seriously at UNSA. It's come up time and again in, in the school. And in fact, in our in our department, and I, I especially, it's especially taken very, very seriously in 2020. Um, if I were you, 
I would desist or refrain from any form of academic dishonesty. Copy pasting or lifting content from online sources and passing that as your own, especially when it comes to online tests, you'll get a zero. There are people in our department that have been expelled indefinitely because of academic dishonesty. There is an individual who is, I don't know if they're in fourth year right now, who failed ICT 3020 last year because of academic dishonesty. This person was caught sharing questions, assessment questions in one of the tests with, with his colleagues. They got a zero, right? And because of what they did, they probably, because we had to nullify the test because of what he did, right? They, they are probably the root cause of why some individuals are repeating 3020, right? So you want to desist or to refrain from any form of academic dishonesty. When you're working as a group, if you notice that uh, a fellow group member is, is trying to push you towards the uh, direction of, uh, where, is, where is that? Towards the direction of, there we go, towards the direction of cheating in the group project, say no, right? Because if, if one team member messes up the group project, everybody is going to be affected, right? So you want to stay away from this. There were people, I don't know if they passed or not, there were people who lost marks because in one of the tests, in 3020, because in one of the tests, they were sharing solutions. It's easy to tell that people are cheating, right? It's even easier with, 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 uh, with this sort of setup where you have people submitting solutions online, right? So if I were you, I'll just stay away from this. Uh, just make sure that you learn and enjoy the course, enjoy the ride. Um, this thing is not going away. It's coming back in 4014. If you don't understand what's going on in 3020, you will find it extremely difficult to manage 4014. If you decide to continue with, with this, once you leave UNSA, you will find it extremely difficult in the work environment, right? Anyway, I thought I'd put it out there, right? Academic dishonesty, it's taken very seriously. All right, um, so the course will be administered exclusively uh, using the Moodle, uh, the, the official, one of the three official learning management platforms uh, endorsed by the University of Zambia. It's not me, I don't come up with the rules, I'm told what to do as well. Um, so all resources, everything is going to be done exclusively via the, the Moodle, unless under, um, uh, and extreme circumstances. Of course, like right now, right? We are, we are having class not via the Moodle, but via Google Meet, right? It turns out that Google Meet is one of the, uh, uh, is it, um, uh, platforms that has been endorsed by the University of Zambia to be used for online learning, right? These lecture sessions. Of course, the other, um, the other platforms uh, out there, like I'm, I'm guessing some of you might have interacted with a uh, uh, big blue button or something, PVP, I don't know. Anyway, or perhaps Zoom or something, I don't know. Um, but all assessments will be uh, administered by the Moodle. Um, and then also, if you haven't figured this out yet, um, uh, we've already sent, sent uh, communication uh, via the mailing list. There's an ICT 3020 mailing list, which is extensively used for communication when it comes to sending out important notifications. For instance, if there's an assignment available, um, all these things are going to be, um, to be done by the Moodle. By the way, I just noticed that I left out something under uh, assessment, right? To incentivize attendance, there are marks that are going to be uh, marks that are going to be allocated to attend, attending lecture sessions, at least a minimum number of lecture sessions. So 
I will modify the I will modify the syllabus, this document here, uh, to reflect the fact that uh, to reflect the fact that uh, that there are marks allocated to attending lectures. We are doing this because uh, it's for your own good. Last year, the there are quite a number of students that failed or decided not to do this course. In part, we strongly feel that because they decided not to, to be active participants in the course, right? So the attendance was just, it was just, it was just low, right? Um, we're trying to see if we can, we can encourage people to attend more classes this time around. All right. Oops, sorry about that. So take note, you've all been added to the mailing list. If you're not receiving emails from ict3trained.unza.zm, do reach out to me. Uh, but take note that uh, only your Unza signed email addresses have been added to this mailing list. Uh, so if you want to, um, to receive notifications, you want to reg regularly or routinely check your Unza signed email address. Hasn't changed, it's still the same, student ID at student.unza.zm. Um, I, I included, as course instructors, yeah, I included to be announced here because I, again, I don't know if uh, some of my colleagues are going to want to participate in this course. There were initially plans for us to do this, but because of the confusion with COVID-19 and online learning, it's likely not going to be the case. It may or it may not be the case. If it's going to be the case, then there'll probably be uh, a different person that's just going to come through to teach maybe a topic or a module or something. Um, because of what's going on, I, am, I don't have, uh, currently I don't have office hours for you guys, right? Uh, it's by appointment and by appointment because if it's, if, if it's a, a crucial, a crucial thing that you need to reach out to me about um, then we can easily make time and arrange for an online interaction. Um, of course, this will change once you are back on campus, once you're physically on campus in the second half of the year. Um, uh, office hours will be communicated to you. Um, but if you wish to make an appointment with, with Lighton, uh, check his calendar. There's a link on slide number 23. Um, and then reach out to him via email to schedule an interaction. Um, there is ideally supposed to be a tutor assigned to this course. There is supposed to be a tutor assigned to this course. The details haven't yet been provided to me. Uh, once those details are provided to me, uh, we will, we will uh, share them with you. Um, and ideally we'll have, once you form those, those um, groups, we will assign the different groups to tutorial groups. Um, We noticed that uh, the official timetable did not have a slot for a third slot for uh, 3020, unless if I missed it, the version of the timetable I have did not have a uh, 3020. Uh, I think I only noticed two slots. Is, is, that, is, is that the case or is that not the case? Could someone confirm? Or if maybe they managed to find the third slot, could, could you share with us the third slot? Hello? Are you there? Yes, sir, we are here. Okay. Uh, were you able to find the third slot on the timetable? <clears throat> it's a question. No, I'm pretty sure nobody did because yeah. if there was somebody to do that, it should have been me or Marco, but we didn't do that. So, okay, great. Thank you for confirming. So, this is a tentative slot. If there's a conflict with either one of you, uh, very very soon I'll, I'll ask that you you select course representative for 30, 30 20 course representative. And I'll ask that the course representatives reach out to me if there's a conflict in this slot. But, but tentatively, uh, to make sure that uh, 
we continue interacting three hours in a week or having three sessions in a week, we shall have um, uh, interactions on Mondays between 16 and 17, on Tuesdays as scheduled between 12 and 13, or 12 and 12.45, and on Thursdays between 15 and 15.45. Um, uh, this thing, if it changes, you have access to a live link to the calendar, right? Uh, if there are changes, these things will be, will be indicated here. In fact, the calendar, this calendar here, is extremely important because it will also include details of um, these other, details of these other milestones and these other activities associated with the course, right? So for instance, uh, oh, wow. okay. So for instance, besides, um, give me a second. So besides the normal lecture sessions, once a tutor is uh, assigned to, to this course, those details, the tutorial meeting times or tutorial slots will be included here. The deadlines associated with assignments will be included here, of course. I mean, they'll be specified on the mood as well, but it's always nice to have a uh, to bookmark this thing so that you, you know exactly what's going on. All right. Um, uh, I, I, was, I, was, I was kind of hoping we'd uh, get to a stage where we, we discuss uh, the course introduction, but I guess we'll do this tomorrow, which is fine. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna pause for a little while and uh, ask if people have any specific questions. Uh, with regards to what I uh, I just uh, talked about. Again, just let me trivia to give you a sense of what we expect in the course. Um, any thoughts, questions, comments? Um, I have a question concerning the timetable. Um, okay. it shows it shows on the eighth of March the class on a Monday is not going to be at this time it's going to be in the in the morning is that the time that we are going to be using for Mondays the morning no. session one on the eighth no this is the timetable of thirty twenty that I have it's Mondays uh, is here the eighth it's sixteen it's That's sixteen. All. Uh, yeah. The one that was shared in the group, it showed that Monday has, is I think that, that was 11 to 12, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so, yeah, that, that was, a, that was a, an error. I mean, I was, I was thinking about a different course here. Uh, oh. That has changed. I, I, in fact, I responded to one of you via the mailing list. I think it was, uh, must have been Ms. Mark or something, who, who reached out uh, to ask if, um, if, if we would have class, because I, I, the, the initial schedule uh, was incorrect, so I made changes to the schedule. Um, I made changes to the schedule, and, and so you should have been, she was trying to find out the same thing here, I think. So this is, this is what I was saying, you want, the single source of truth is the, the calendar and the course syllabus. So the course syllabus has these details and also the, the live link to the, the live calendar itself. Please, please uh, make sure that you bookmark the calendar, right? This thing here. Bookmark the link to the calendar. This. That will give you um, details of exactly, and let me just check here, just in case, I hope I'm not sharing uh, this little window here. This will give you um, a link to a live copy of uh, the schedule, right? So in this week, we are meeting 16 to 17 on Monday, 12 to 13 Tuesday, um, 15 to 16 Thursday. In the week of uh, 8th of March, same schedule. Uh, we are continuing this until you guys are physically back on campus. In which case, I guess things are probably going to change or something. Any other comments or thoughts or uh, complaints or something? I, my other com complaint is on the mailing list. 
I am on the mailing list, but I cannot access my mail. I was able to access it in first year and um, the first half of second year. But at the moment, I cannot access it. It says my pass, all my passwords are wrong because I'm because I use the same um, student ID as my password, but it doesn't allow me to go through. Yeah, so there's a, you, you reach out to there's a dedicated group of people that uh, look into those issues. If I can just find, uh, huh, if I can just find. Uh, that's an important question, by the way, because I think uh, there's probably somebody else who reached out to me to complain about. Uh, I don't know if I don't know if it's this group or something, but uh, there's supposed to be. Oh my goodness! Can I not find? Uh... Okay, I can't find. Uh... It appears I can't find uh, the label here, but uh, hmm. CICT. There, so support. So you want to, uh, you want to, hi, it, what, sorry, can I call you back? I'm in a class and I know I owe you a number of uh, phone calls. I'll call you back after class. All right, thanks. Uh, sorry about that. I needed to pick up that uh, phone call because the uh, idea and thing was supposed to be off or muted. It's muted now. So, so you want to send? Are you still there? Hello. Yes, uh, I'm still there. All right. Yeah. I mean, everybody else. You want to do what uh, this person did, right? Elida Mwa or something. You send mail to support dot education at unza when, if you have any issue to do with e-learning, expired password, you're unable to access Moodle, you're mailing, you can't receive uh, e emails via the mailing list, you send a query to that uh, email address and people will sort out your issue. All right. Any other thoughts or comments? Hello? All right, so if there are no questions, listen, I have another class. Um, so what I'm going to ask that you do is, uh, we don't have to do the voting in real time. Um, as always, at least for causes that I am involved with, uh, we need two course representatives, one male, one female. Um, so I will ask that amongst yourselves, please select um, two individuals that you wish to represent you it's important that you do this, right? There are certain instances when you want people to reach out on your behalf rather than have all 60 or 70 plus of you reach out to the, um, to the course instructor. So I'll ask that you, you, you do the, I don't know if you're going to do the voting via WhatsApp. I don't know if there's a WhatsApp group for the, for the uh, an informal WhatsApp group for the, um, for the course for, the, for, the, for, the, for this year, the third year, or if you're going to want to take advantage of this same interaction because it's being recorded right now but what i'll ask you do is once you do the voting please uh can i have whoever i went to vote to represent you to reach out to me via my email address uh so uh have the course representatives email email me right um all right and then we can make a plan if there are clashes with some of these lecture sessions, if we think that uh, because we have online classes, it's unnecessary for us to be meeting uh, in the afternoon, for instance, we can perhaps move this to a slot that is convenient with everybody else. It turns out, apparently, there are certain times of the day when uh, bundles perhaps are cheaper. These are things you should be thinking about, right? Perhaps the network is uh, much better, right? My schedule, uh, even though I'm interacting with first years that are physical on campus, but my morning slots are okay, so I'm, I'm open to having an early morning class or a late afternoon or early evening class as well. Excellent. So I will see you tomorrow when we continue our discussion with a brief introduction to what exactly it is we're going to be covering in ICT 3020. Um, I have to leave now because I have another class. Thanks.
Bye. All right. Thank you, Doc.